Hi, how you doing? Justin here. And today we're going to be talking about how you can design your own holistic practice routine. Now, practice is definitely not a one-size-fits-all thing. We all have different needs, and that's part of this idea of having a holistic routine and understanding all of the different elements that you need to practice and how they interact with each other, I think is a really, really important thing. Now, there are many ways of breaking down all of those different things, but I found a way of breaking it down into six main areas. Now, if you want to divide it some other way, that's totally fine. A lot of what I'm going to be talking about today will apply to whatever routine or system that it is that you want to use. But I'd recommend you have a little bit of an explore of this system and see how it works for you. But remember, it's definitely adaptable. I'm going to suggest things to you and say, hey, you might want to do this kind of thing in this slot. But if that doesn't work, if you don't enjoy it or you already know it or you're already good at it or there's something else you need to work on, you know, you should feel like you want to adapt these routines to suit yourself. But another part of this that's really important is making sure that you develop all of your different skills at the same time. If you know that there's an area that's particularly weak, you might give it a little bit more attention, but you wouldn't work just on that one thing. If you liken it to, say, going to the gym, you know, my left arm's quite a lot weaker than my right arm, but that doesn't mean I go to the gym and I just do left hand bicep curls. That would just be weird. And then if I did that long enough, it would become lopsided the wrong way. So... While it is important that you kind of understand what your weaknesses are and what, you, what your strengths are and how that might interact with the routine, I think having a good understanding of all of those different elements and how they apply to practice is a really fundamental thing. Now, I'm going to give them to you in not the order of importance because actually the last couple that I'm going to talk about I think are probably the most important. But it's a, uh, this way, the way I'm going to explain it to you, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. So the first thing, that, uh, the first area that we need to talk about is going to be technique. Now, technique is the kind of the physical part of doing things on the guitar. It's like going to the gym for guitar. It's, are your fingers flexible enough? Are they strong enough? Have you got synchronization between the two? Uh, can you bend in tune? Are you picking accurately? Uh, is your, when you play fingerstyle, are your fingers caressing the strings correctly? So this is technical stuff and this is one of those areas where we definitely all have different things going on some people are going to find playing fast really easy other people are going to find that really difficult some people find using a pick at all really horrible sometimes some people find picking things different everybody has different stuff going on so in the technique area i am going to suggest things to you as part of the routines and say hey you might want to think about this exercise but you need to think about what you need because no teacher is going to know exactly what you need. You know what you need and you need to give it some thought and think about it. It kind of comes back and this is this holistic element about what songs you want to play. What's your repertoire? Because that's going to inform the techniques that you want to do. If you're a country guitar player, you don't need to work on finger tapping, right? That would just be a complete waste of time. So you want to, the exercises that you choose in technique are going to be informed by the songs that you want to play, the repertoire that you want. Always bear that in mind when it comes to technical decisions. That said, there are some things like pick accuracy and synchronization between the hands that are really good things to work on for pretty much everyone. So uh, I'm going to try and explain in the technical exercises department, I'm going to try and explain to you what the benefits are of a particular exercise. And again, I think you should never practice something if you don't really understand why. If you don't really go like, I'm doing this exercise because it's going to help me do this thing that I can't do now or that I need to work on, then you shouldn't be doing it ever, right? So I'm hoping in my lessons, I'm going to give you the why you should be doing it. And you have to decide yourself like, yeah, actually, I really need this or nah, yeah, I don't really need that one. Okay, so you have to become a bit more of a, the master of your own destiny and always ask why. It's a really, really big part of your growth as a musician is to design your own practice routine. So that's technique. We're always going to be looking at different technique and technique exercises uh, as we go along in my courses. Now, second area, knowledge, knowing things. That's knowing chords, knowing scales, knowing arpeggios, knowing music theory, knowing and the application of all of those things. Not just knowledge wouldn't necessarily just be reading it. It'd be playing those things, playing new chords, exploring new chord grips, seeing how you can manipulate one chord and turn it into another chord or a scale and turning it into another scale. Any of that sort of stuff. That's it's really, really important knowing stuff. If you know the chords in a key, when it comes to working out a song, it becomes really easy because you know 
well, these are the most likely chords to come after the chord that I'm on. So there's these bits of knowledge that make learning repertoire, that make ear training better. There's, it, it's a really, really powerful thing. Again, it might reveal some things that you need to work on technically. If you're struggling with the chord changes, you might end up having more chord changes in your technique part. Okay, Or if you can't stretch to a particular chord, then you might end up adding more finger stretching to your technical stuff. So again, all of these things kind of inform each other. It's, it's super important to get that. Uh, next thing on the list, which I've already touched on a bit, is repertoire. Now, repertoire are the songs that you're going to play because it's all about playing songs. At the end of the day, that's what we want to do. We never go to a gig and watch somebody play scales up and down super fast, although sometimes I feel like I've done that. Um, so thinking about the music that you want to play is really important. Uh, as part of the course, again, I'm going to talk about the three different types of songs that I think that you should be working on at any one time. Don't worry about that right now, but uh, having an understanding of your repertoire and uh, what songs you might want to work on, what techniques you need to play those songs, having enough campfire songs that you can play and entertain your friends at a party or a barbecue, that kind of thing is really important. Understanding that some songs are going to help you develop particular techniques. and there's a, it, It's a pretty big, massive area, but understanding that techniques should be part of your, your practice routine or something that you focus on, really, really big deal. Next one, which is now we're getting into the stuff that's actually really super important, and the next one is going to be ear training. Now, Ear training can be as fundamental as like hearing a sound and finding it on the guitar. Now, I've always thought that transcribing is the best way to do that, and that's going to be the focus of the uh, grade three course on my website is going to uh, introducing you guys to how to transcribe. That is listening to a song on a you know on your computer and figuring out how to play it on your own without having to refer to a tab or anything else. Uh, it is actually a lot easier than you might think it is, especially if you start with easier material. If you start trying to learn something really difficult, it can be really off-putting and like, oh, I can't do this. It doesn't work for me. There are other types of ear training you can do. Interval ear training is a really fantastic thing that you might want to explore as well independently. Uh, depends on what you do. That would be naming the distance between notes and going do, do, and going, oh, that's a perfect fourth. Do, 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 because it's the, you know, uh, wedding march, whatever, and then go do, 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 and knowing that that interval is found as a, a, on a certain place on the guitar neck. You can understand why that would be a really amazing thing. Well, actually, you might not understand. Let me explain that. The, the idea when you're transcribing, you hear a sound, sound goes in your ear, into your musical mind, and then you make that sound come out of the guitar neck. And it might take you a little while when you first start to try and find the sounds under your fingers. But the more you do it, the faster you get it. And most times I can just listen to a song and kind of play along with it pretty quickly because I'm used to ha hearing this. The sound goes in here and my mind goes, oh, how do I make that sound? And my hand goes, yeah, like this. Now, eventually, long term, you don't need that external source and you can just find sounds in your musical imagination and you'll know how to make those sounds come out of the guitar neck. Really good tester, if you haven't done it before, uh, is to attempt to play Happy Birthday on the guitar. Stay in one area of the neck, start on any finger on any string and just play Happy Birthday. Any string except the, the thinner string because then you'd have to jump out of position. But just have a go. If you can't express yourself playing Happy Birthday, then you obviously need to do a little bit of work on your musical imagination and your hand developing the starting point for that is transcribing when you learn a song by ear there's a whole heap of other benefits that you get that you won't get if you just learn the song you still learn a lot of good stuff learning the song from one of my lessons or a tab on it whatever but there's extra stuff that you get when you learn it by yourself and it's there's one of the reasons i think why there's so many of the, the greatest guitar players of all time were coming from that era of the 60s and the 70s or whatever are in that era, there wasn't much in the way of sheet music for the kind of pop and blues and jazz and stuff. So people only learn by ear. So I feel like that those guys kind of and girls worked harder in that to get to the to being able to play songs. And they they learned to use their ear and they learned to express themselves kind of organically without even having to think about it, you know. And they didn't have all of these other things. They didn't have the knowledge. They didn't have somebody explaining all of the bits and pieces to them. So they had to figure it out all by ear. And that's not a bad thing, to be honest. Like, if I was going to say to someone, like, you should learn to know everything and then play, uh, it, the people that do do that are never really as good as the guys that have just learned to play by ear organically and don't know what they're doing. All right? So if you're going to choose one camp or the other, I'd definitely go by learning by ear. But you don't have to. The perfect balance here is understanding and learning in a series of lessons like this where I'm going to spoon feed you the stuff, but make sure you do the transcribing bit. Don't, the ear training, transcribing, it's, it's really a big deal. 
Uh, next element I want to talk about is time and time feel and groove and pocket. It's all well and good being able to play a particular strumming pattern or play a set of chords or play a song, but the rhythmic feel, the time feel that you have, the groove, the pocket that you have when you play is one of the most important factors as to whether you're actually going to sound any good or not. That's just the truth. Like you, if you, even if you played sloppy chords and and your guitar was a bit out of tune, if you had a really great groove, people would be like, "Yeah, this is cool." But if you had everything else perfect, but your groove sucked, then people wouldn't be digging it. We're talking about like trying to make the the music feel amazing. You got to remember that when somebody's listening to you, they they feel your feeling through the music. That's why music's the universal language. Because we feel stuff through the music. doesn't matter. You know, we don't have to understand any more about it. We don't need lyrics. We can feel it. And if you're all tense and rigid when you're playing, the people listening to you are going to feel that. And they won't enjoy it. If you're like super relaxed and cool, they'll feel that too. If, you, if you're playing in a, you know, a punk band or something, you're really angry and you're playing really angry, they'll feel that and relate to that. If you're feeling really sad and people are feeling really sad, they'll relate. You get it. So this... You understand, most of this is down to the time, the feeling, the time, the feel, the groove, the pocket. I'm putting it all under this one uh, umbrella called time. But it's really, really important to work on your time feel, your strumming, how you play, your phrasing, all of that sort of stuff all ties together in time. So explore your weaknesses. If you're playing all the time and you are one of those guys that really tense all the time, guys or girls, I keep using guys. I, I mean guys as in men and women, but I know it's not appropriate. So please forgive me if I sometimes drop that bomb but anyway uh if you're one of those people who knows that they're really tense when they play maybe you need to put some extra time into just you know relaxing when you play and and exploring your time and your feeling it's really big deal now the last one which is kind of an optional one is improvisation now it depends on the sort of style that you want to play and what the focus is of your musical adventure if you say a songwriter maybe improvising isn't kind of part of the thing maybe improvising is more exploring like exploring chords, exploring harmony, exploring lyrics or whatever. Imp- that could be kind of counted as improvising because they call improvising is instant composition. So it'd probably be quite a decent thing for a songwriter. But a songwriter might not want to learn blues licks or how to improvise with the major scale if they've got a guitar player in their band who's doing that job. If you really want to play lead guitar, you want to get into improvising and stuff, then obviously that element of improvising is a really important part. You definitely should not leave it out. So a little bit of the, you know, how much improvising and what type of improvising you do will depend on your own adventure. That'll be involved with goal setting, which is the kind of thing that we're going to talk about in the practice sessions, the practice series that you might want to check out as well. So as I said, I'm going to give you for grade three, I'm going to give you a set routine of two elements, so 10 minutes on each one of those six things. So it'll give you basically an hour routine. If you can't do an hour's practice a day, which is quite a lot, I would break it into two and do a half an hour on one day day and the other half an hour the next day. Do try and remember to spend as much time on fun playing as you do on focused practice, right? So to do this full one hour practice routine, that would mean that you would need an additional hour of just playing guitar and enjoying yourself. Right, just literally, just playing and having a having fun and playing literally whatever you're enjoying. Sometimes it might be stuff on your practice routine. Sometimes it might not be. Sometimes it'll be a song. Sometimes you might be just be noodling around and playing with a looper or doing whatever. It should be just enjoying the instrument. Don't forget that part. The the students that I meet that stay like really super focused, particularly in the intermediate stages, super focused on a routine without doing the fun stuff. A lot of them fall away from it. They get a bit bored of it. So try and keep that fun element. Once you're through intermediate and you're kind of a journeyman kind of guitar player, then at that point, you probably need to be going like, right, I'm going to be doing eight hours practice a day and I'm going to be dividing it like this and you take it a lot more seriously. That's like professional level guitar player. But for the intermediate stage, really, I think it's important to keep that, just that fun level in there. Uh, once you, as you develop as a musician as a, and you, you f- get more of an understanding of the areas that you really need to work on and the things that you're kind of more comfortable with, you might end up adapting that into having, say, three uh, practice sessions within each of that, which, of course, increases the time. But you might find some areas need you can cut back on a bit. Um, there are things like the transcribing exercises 
even though I would uh, uh, officially uh, assign you a 10 minute a day thing, you'll probably find that spending one hour once a week on transcribing will be more effective because most people to get into transcribing, get your pen and paper out, set up the computer and your guitar and all that stuff, you know, get the, the song that you're transcribing up in the software and takes a bit of time you might not want be wanting to do that every day so one little session of that once a week might be better same possibly with anything there might be other repertoire things that you spend through the week you're doing your technical and having fun and then once a week you do have a really longer uh, repertoire session everybody has a different need when it comes to practice and a different time uh, allowance for it some people like to practice every day i think that's a really good idea it's definitely better to practice every day a little bit than a lot on one day but you need to find a little spot what works for you you know and just while we're on it just a slightly a slight diversion if you're struggling to practice at all and you str struggle with the regularity of it just try and do like five minutes a day i often make a joke of it say one minute a day but because everybody can find one minute i'm pretty sure everyone can find five minutes so just try and get your bum on the seat for five minutes a day most times it'll be more than five minutes. You, it, it's like you get there and then it's just, yeah, it's, oh yeah, this guitar thing, this is kind of fun. So that's one of the tricks, the most effective tricks, I think, for struggling to get to practice is just like getting your bum on the seat for a very short practice session and then you'll probably find it goes a little bit longer. Again, I'll be giving you more tips on uh, uh, getting motivated and rut busting and that sort of stuff as part of the practice, the effective practice series. So you might want to check that out if you're feeling that's particularly pertinent to you. Well, I think we're about there on the holistic practice routine. If you're over on YouTube, remember there'll be tons of supporting information over on the website. There'll be a link in the description. But if you're over on YouTube, really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon if you want to get notified when I'm doing new lessons. If you're on the website already, click the resources tab. You'll probably find yourself some other useful resources and PDF downloads that'll help you design your own practice routine. There's plenty more great stuff coming up on practice. If you've got any questions, do leave them in the comments. I'm doing my best to check them out. I will answer them in the comments themselves and probably add those bits into the main lesson text as well so that I'll help out anyone else who might have the same question. If you've got a question, maybe read through the text quickly first in case I've already answered your question before you leave the comment. Have yourself a fantastic day and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You'll take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.